Hey everybody and welcome back to Rock, Paper, Pencil, your daily dose of tabletop and traditional gaming goodness. And today we're going to be talking about some more Eclipse Phase. But today we're going to be talking about Eclipse Phase characters. Um, what your characters do. How to create a solid character. Um, how to... How to really flesh out a character and the three different ways to create characters at this point. Uh, as of as of this filming, uh, I do believe Transhuman has come out. Um, if not, I know that the Kickstarter backers have gotten it. I didn't have the money to kickstart it, so I don't have it. I still have all the playtest material, and I have used... I did extensively playtest in a couple of different sessions and scenarios, the different ways to create characters. Now you have three, three similar ways of creating characters. There is no stat rolling. Everything in this game is point by. Which I like. I actually prefer that because it forces you to make a balanced character. It forces you to decide very early on, alright, I want him to be strong. So that means I've got it. He, because he worked out so much, he had to lose something somewhere. I want him to be smart. So because he was always studying and always in school, he might not have had as much time to work out. And I, I really like it, but the, the core system for creating characters, while incredibly in-depth and it allows you to do a lot with your character, all of the things that go with in-depth character creation go along with this. It does take a long time. Now, once you get used to doing it, you can knock out a character in about an hour and a half, two hours. Until you get used to doing it, though, you look closer to the three, four, possibly five hour mark. I had someone, that it took them... Um, seven hours to actually create a character. I had a player at one time that took forever. Now the other two character generation paths, which I did speak about um, in another video, are, I believe my first video actually, are the life path character creation system and the character pack character creation system. The pack system you have a pool of points and you just pay for stat block packs. Um, you pay for your base stats, you pay for your skills, you pay for your equipment and all of that. Your morph, everything comes out of the, the, that pool. But you get a much smaller pool and you pay for packs. You don't have to go in and account for each individual point you spent on a skill. This pack costs 3 points out of my, I believe it's eleven available, 10 or 11 available points. This, point, this pack cost one point, and I get all these skills, alright, and so I'm not on the character sheet, and move on. Uh, that makes character creation, when you're first starting out, only take about an hour, um, once you get used to it, about 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes. Life Path, on the other hand, Life Path is my favorite, because it creates a fully fleshed out, ready to go character from the get-go, and it doesn't... It gives you just enough key information about your character for you to draw conclusions and read between the lines and decide on things and how your character did these things and where your character comes from and all of those all of those things that you want in character creation. But it gives you key points in that character's life to build on. It decides your character's skill set. You decide how it got that skill set and why. Um, the life gen path is wonderful. I absolutely love it. Um, Two players in my Eclipse Phase game that I'm running currently actually use the Life Path character creation system. The other two used the um, character pack generation system. And to be honest, the two that used the Life Path were much more fleshed out and they've had a lot more fun with their characters. Um, that system, when you're just learning how to do it, may take 30 to 45 minutes. Once you've got it down and, and you've really got in the you know what to roll when and whether or not you're rolling certain things um, it's taken me as little as 15 but on average it, it takes me around 25 30 minutes solid solid system it was a wonderful addition to the game that the guys at post human studios have done um, and, and they keep they keep cranking out just great great books over and over and over again um, as always I highly recommend checking those out now, characters in Eclipse Face can be a lot of things. 
you have to decide how old your character is because if your character was around pre-fall what did they do before that happened because the fall changed everything um, were they children just before the fall were they children during the fall were they adults did they fight in the fall or did they just run um, is your character an NFUG, a uh, an ego that had its morph destroyed during the fall and they got reinstantiated and now they're and now they're having to work off their morph or they have worked off their morph but how did that time as an NFUG affect them but you can be anything in eclipse phase to a sp from a space cowboy a la cowboy bebop or um, firefly or anything like that to a space trucker such as that episode of cowboy bebop to a scientist to a war-torn hero to a um, a complete socialite to a media personality and this is the first game I've ever played that's set in a current gen or um, a current time frame or future setting where playing a media personality actually does have its perks and it's actually really fun to do um, because of the concept of the mesh the internet as it exists today in 2013 is how much space and how much um, data that each individual entity in Eclipse Phase has allotted to itself in the mesh. Think about that. The internet that this whole world shares is the same size as what one person gets in Eclipse Phase. There is more data that that one person gets in Eclipse Phase than exists today. And that's pretty cool. But because of that, and because of the XP system, or the um, experience playback system, excuse me, don't want to confuse anybody with experience points, but with the experience playback system, you... You get a... Uh, you get a lot of media personalities that literally just post videos and become personalities because they do cool things in their life. Or because people just want to live as someone else for a few hours. And because of the wonderful things of simul space and everything, you can do that and you can go live a full day in someone else's life and it only take 20 minutes in the real world. Which is pretty cool. And your character can be absolutely anything, but you need to decide very very early on whether or not you want to be very combat viable. Combat in Eclipse Phase is not something that has to take precedence. In fact, in my game, it really doesn't. Um, it has. They have, um, before we'd really found a direction and decided where we wanted to go with the game, uh, there was a couple of times where combat was really prevalent. But it doesn't ever have to be. Um, you have to decide how your character feels about combat, how your character feels about motivations and everything. Motivations are another great thing about the character creation system. You have to choose three things from the get-go that your character cares so much about that it's what motivates them forward. And they can either love it or hate it. They can hate something so much that it motivates them forward. And I think that that's really cool. That you have to nail down those things very early on. You also have to nail down what faction that character is a part of, which if it's wanted, um, if people want it, I can do an in-depth look at each um, each major faction. But I'm not going to do that right now. You can pretty much read those on your own. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory. But these factions really shape your character. And, and that's what I meant when I said that your character gets these little key points in their life and then you, as the player, figure out what's in between. All right, so, so when you roll on that life path system and your character is a Barsoomian, why? Well, you, you take a step back and look at what they did right before the fall. Would that make them a Barsoomian today? Well, no, not really. So what event made him a Barsoomian? It's a, it's a really cool, cool system. Now, back for what you've got to figure out for your character, you need to figure out whether or not you want to be heavy combat. You need to figure out whether you want, not you want to be smart, whether or not you want to play, what kind of morph you want to be in. Do you want to be in an infomorph? Do you want to be in a uh, biomorph, a synthmorph, a pod? What, what, what do you want to be in? 
um, because that's going to determine your social stigmas and whether or not you want to deal with that. You have to determine where your ego came from. Are you an actual human ego pre-fall? Are you an in, are you an NPG where you're reinstantiated? Are you an AI? Are you artificial intelligence? Totally fine to be artificial intelligence. Um, or because they still have birth rates, because new egos have to be created some way other than artificial intelligence. Now, do you want to be a born post-fall character? That's fine because um, they actually state in the book that over the course of about six months, I believe is what it says, your average ego when a child is born, because most biomorphs can have children, they are fully biologically intact and correct when they have children they they put them in simul space and in about three to six months they've learned everything they would have learned over 20 to 25 years of life they come out fully matured and it's and it's quick it's fast and there's no problem playing that or do you want to, to play an older character? A, a character that is so old that he remembers when they were able to start digitizing consciousness. Maybe he was one of the first test subjects. Maybe because he was one of, their, one of the first ones that happened and they still were working out the bugs in it, something went wrong when they digitized him, giving him a penalty or something. Eclipse Face characters are really broad spectrum. And there are no classes. That's another thing that I love about the game. There is no class. Um, you just make a character. And while I, there are certain game lines and certain games especially where I will tout the, uh, the classes and the class structure, this is not one of them. I feel like if you're going to, if you were to add classes to this game, it would fall apart. Um, concepts, archetypes, sure. But straight up classes would fall to pieces. Now, in that, you do have your, your standard archetypes. You have your, your people who do a lot of combat, your people who do a lot of intelligent things, your, skill, your skilled people, your socialites, your everything. But because of how many skill points you get, you don't have to just saddle yourself into one direction. You could, you could make yourself more like a human. Just because that you've worked for the last four years at Walmart doesn't mean that's all you know. Um, just because since you've been out of high school, you've been in college, doesn't mean that that's all you know. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful setting, wonderful, wonderful system um, for character creation. And the characters can be so absolutely broad. Um, I'm going to use an example of uh, a character that I've created. Um, known only as Moses. The only the only name he goes by is Moses. He is a he is there he in a lot of ways in my sessions in my game, he is a lot like the group's Nick Fury. He directs them where to go and um, how to handle things. And he doesn't necessarily have all the intel you would need going in, but he does like to be kept up to date. Now, Moses took me right at 20 minutes to complete with the life path system and Moses has a lot of skills that he because he's not just a firewall agent and for those of you that are in my game if you metagame this I will know so anyway as we continue um, Moses prior to joining firewall he was simply a terraformer that's all he did. He, he terraformed Mars. But some things happened and he ran across some, a strain of the exergent virus and, and over time he's become more combat oriented. Over time he's become more psychologically oriented. Over time he's become better able to handle the exergent virus but the core of his skill set is still the skill set he would have needed as a terraformer. Uh, now another thing you need to note about characters 
is that your skills aren't all you've got. You've also got your morph. When you make a character, you also get a morph. No matter how you go through character creation, you have a morph. And everything pretty much but infomorphs, and even infomorphs in a way could have them, um, you get enhancements. You get implants. You get um, cybernetic enhancements. You get crazy stuff. Um, you want grip pads on your feet. Have them. You want a prehensile tail. Have them. You want chameleon skin that doesn't quite work like the cloak from Metal Gear Solid, but still helps you blend into a surrounding. Get it. Um, you want something that improves your strength because it gives you, you put your adrenal glands in overdrive. Get it. You want something that improves your speed because it injects you with drugs. Just straight up in your pituitary gland, just right there. Get it. There's nothing wrong with it. So your, your morph is just as much a part of your character as your ego. However, your ego is the only thing that carries over from morph to morph. So in my opinion, when it comes to character creation, you should focus more on your ego and less on your morph. But the morph is still still wholly important. Um, now, you can check back a couple of videos ago, uh, my first video actually, and see where I've included a link, link in the description for uh, Eclipse Phase books. Pick them up, they're really great. Um, I do recommend paying for them. The guys at Post Human have done such an awesome job with this setting. We're going to continue on with more videos about Eclipse Phase. Um, and we are going to cover other games in the same frame, uh, framing as I'm doing Eclipse Phase now. And as always, if you've got questions, comments, cuss words, leave them below. Thank you for watching, as always, and until next time, keep rolling.